Hi, in this video I'll explain a solved problem on a banked track. The radius of a track is given and the maximum speed of car going round that track is also mentioned. We have to find the safe design angle of the road with respect to the horizontal to prevent skidding of the car at their maximum speed. Similarly, for a normal expressway, the smaller radius and a smaller maximum speed, we have to find the safe design angle. Let's look at this 2D sketch and let's look at the car standing on an inclined road at an angle theta. The car is actually moving right now round and round and this is only a snapshot. So we have some arrows passing through the center of gravity of the car. You can see the red arrow which is the normal reaction perpendicular to the surface of the road. We have the vertical black arrow and therefore we must uh, expand this triangle which is uh, drawn down below to the right side. So you can see the normal reaction which is uh, in a red arrow and the vertical arrow is the component of n. It has to be smaller than n. Nothing can be bigger than n. So that's n cos theta. And n cos theta is the one which will balance out the weight of the car which is acting vertically downwards no matter what is the angle of the track. Therefore, to complete this triangle, we have drawn a green arrow from left to right, which is n sine theta. Now, n sine theta has nothing to balance it. So, if you draw it on the car, now we move back to the car, from left to right passing through its center of gravity, this is the force which provides the centripetal acceleration. Now, this n sine theta is kind of limited, because n is limited by the weight of the car, sine theta depends upon the angle of the road, which is fixed, Therefore, n sine theta cannot keep on increasing. There is a limit to it. And that's why it's important to talk about the ideal uh, angle of track or the ideal speed. So we are going to equate uh, n sine theta itself to the mv squared by r, which is the centripetal force, so that we are not depending upon friction to keep the car in place. So if n sine theta, which is limited itself, is able to balance mv squared by r for a particular value of the velocity, then the car is not tending to move sideways up the incline or down the incline. Therefore, there is no frictional static force acting. Now, the red arrow that is showing the frictional static force will come into play only if the mv squared by r increases beyond n sine theta or goes below n sine theta, which can happen if the velocity of the car is above or below 350 kilometers per hour. Now coming to the vertical direction, and we balance the forces here, as I said before, the n cos theta, which is vertical, is balanced by the mg, which is vertically downwards. And that's simple, and we talked about it. Now we come to the real solution. So we plug in uh, n sine theta equal to mv squared by r for an ideal speed v, which is 350 kilometers per hour. We are going to design the track for 350 kilometers per hour. Therefore, if you divide n sine theta by n cos theta, you get tan theta equal to mv squared by r divided by mg, mm cancels, and you get v squared by rg. So if you substitute for v after converting it into meters per second, uh, you will get 97.22. Then you square it divided by radius 1200 into g9.81, you'll get theta as 38.76 degrees. Now, just for the understanding, it's nothing to do with the answer to the question. If the car goes slower than 350 kilometers per hour for this fixed angle, we know that n sine theta is fixed by this 38.76. Then the car will tend to slip downwards uh, as it goes around the track and the static friction therefore will get created instantly and this friction will act opposite to the direction of motion so if it's getting slipped downwards the friction will act upwards and therefore you can see the equation that I've written there that it will be n sine theta minus of the frictional force uh, component that's uh, friction force into cos theta. Uh, similarly the, uh, the story for uh, the car going more than 350 kilometers per hour so a car that is slower than 350, the actual V is lower than the ideal V. And the mv squared by r could be less than n sine theta minus of force of friction to cos theta. 
The same logic is used when the car goes faster than 350 km per hour. The mv squared by r increases tremendously and that could be more than the provided centripetal force and sin theta plus frictional force. Now coming to the second part of the uh, problem uh, for the expressway, we have the radius given, we have the max speed is 150 km per hour, we are designing the expressway for this particular speed, for this ideal speed. Therefore, we put tan theta as v squared by rg, we substitute v in terms of meters per second. As before, we get 41.67 whole squared divided by 509.81 and that gives a theta of 19.5 degrees. I hope the problem and the concept is clear to you. Thanks and have a great day.